This is the Mobile Tech Podcast, brought to you by worldpodcasts.com. Now here's your host, Tank Girl, Miriam Joie. Brought to you by Audible. Stay tuned for a special offer at the end of the show. Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Joie, and today is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021, and my guest is the awesome Ricky Velacrez of GSM Arena. Hi, Ricky. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here right now in New York. Uh, it's one of the first travel events I've done for work in a long time, so I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited. I know. It's jazzing up, isn't it? It's like, yes! Yes! I know. Back in the city, I, I really love the city. Yeah, me too. It's good. So I, I, I was here two weeks ago, so I feel really kind of blessed to do two podcasts, like almost two weeks apart in New York City. Yeah. So thanks for being on the show live. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. In person, in person right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be a little disorganized today because it was so dry in terms of news. And it's only Wednesday. Usually I do the show on Thursday or Friday. So bear with us because we're going to talk about some Qualcomm news first. And then we're going to talk about some rumors and leaks mostly right now. And specifically, I think I want we want to talk about the of the Pixel 6 leaks and rumors. There's been launch dates and it's come and gone back and forth. There's some news on the wireless charging. There's other rumors and news around the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. And I think the last set of news that I want to talk about is around the Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. So all of these phones, we know they're coming. They've been rumored and leaked before. Obviously the Pixel is not more than leaked. Like what would you call this weird reveal of Google's here. I think it's half released or <laughs> half announced. <laughs> yes. <laughs> half, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. That's pretty much the way I see it as well. It's kind of weird, but it's it's fine. So anyway, we're going to talk about that. But first, let's start with Qualcomm because the, the reason we're here in New York is for Qualcomm event about Qualcomm Snapdragon Sound. And it's kind of a bit weird, wasn't it? I mean, it's not bad weird. Like, I mean, it's... It, the the event was very flashy as events tend to be um but they the 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 premise of the event was higher quality sound over bluetooth that qualcomm has been working on they're excited they were a little bit skimpy on the details some of those i listen i love when we go to events yeah. and you are there because you ask all the tough questions <laughs> and you always make the pr people scratch their heads <laughs> like uh, uh, can we answer this can we not like what is <laughs> I didn't mean to be a pain in the butt, but I mean, look, the reality is, you know, I worked in audio professionally. I worked at Dolby before I worked. I did codec stuff like I actually know how codecs work. So it's really interesting to me. Like I, I nerded out with the guy afterwards. We got all technical. But mm -hmm. I think the takeaway for me is Qualcomm, as we've seen with the influencer program and that influencer phone is trying to get their brand out there in the eyes of the consumers, right? Not beyond the, you know, like Intel inside kind of thing, like sure. Snapdragon on the box for the phone, but more like, hey, we are a company that you use all day, every day with your Snapdragon devices. And we want you to think of us in addition to thinking of, you know, Asus, you know, Samsung, whatever the phone might be that you're using, right? And I think that's interesting. That's an interesting strategy. And this Snapdragon Insider phone kind of hints at that, right? And then we have the whole Snapdragon sound. So a few months ago, was it March or something? I don't remember. Don't quote me on this. But they announced <laughs> Snapdragon sound, like this new branding, I guess, for devices that are going to have that technology having that on the box. So if you buy a pair of headphones or earbuds, you can now say, you know, I'm buying the ones because of Snapdragon Sound or whatever. Yeah, and the fact that it's Snapdragon Sound is easier for a consumer to understand versus AptX HD, which is their previous <laughs> implementation of Bluetooth audio. So I see what they're doing. I, I, I acknowledge that they're trying to get this into, maybe they're going to start advertising, like uh, now with Snapdragon Sound, and they're partnering with other Bluetooth speaker and headphone makers so that they can, um, they can really put Qualcomm on the box that way. You know? Yeah. I think that's the plan. And so that's fair. And I feel like what the takeaway for me that from a more technical perspective is that we now have apparently for the first time, see, I was a little mistaken. I thought that LDAC, Sony's high quality transmission codec for Bluetooth was lossless, but it turns out it's not quite. And I thought that LHDC, which is used by 
OnePlus, for example, for mm. their Buds Pro that we talked about on the podcast last week is also, I thought, was also lossless. I knew there were efforts to make, like, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say almost lossless, because if it's not almost lossless, then it's, it's not lossless. But I'm just saying, like, high bitrate, high quality audio over Bluetooth has been a thing since, as you said, Aptek HD. But I think a lot of has happened since then, like LDAC and stuff. And so this is now, according to Qualcomm, the first true solution that's 100% losses at CD quality, 44.1.16. And so if you buy a device in the future when they come out with these chips that say Snapdragon sound on them, like earbuds or speakers or headphones, and of course the phone's matching that. And I assume that any phone made with a chip released this year will probably support it. Like the 888, the 870, the... 778, 780, all of those new mm -hmm. chips, I would put assume have that. So that's kind of how my takeaway was that we finally got lossless audio over Bluetooth. And, you know, then this whole marketing round, which I think is really interesting because they have Steve Aoki here in town performing tonight. We haven't seen the show yet, but we're going to see that concert tonight. It should be fun. And they have him as a spokesperson. How what do you think of that? Um, I think it's... It's definitely interesting to see Steve Aoki as, because he was doing the voiceover in the presentation we saw in that yeah. like dome. Like they had us, they put us in a dome, and and it was like a surround projection around us, and it was like explaining about sounds and and quality and all this stuff. And Steve Aoki was doing the voiceovers, and 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 he was talking about um, you know Snapdragon Sound is going to be one of these really cool experiences and uh, best for audio. So. Um, like you like like we were saying this is this is the way that they're going to appeal to the masses like listen we have this thing that's going to be a better experience for wireless audio going back to what you said about ldac sony ldac right yeah how about about how you, you thought that they said that it wasn't lossless that's qualcomm saying it's not lossless yeah i wonder what sony would say about that. Yeah, I am convinced. Like, I'm not sure about LHDC from OnePlus, and you know, I think also Huawei has their own codec. There's a few different ones, but I thought for sure LDAC because you know Sony's always been at the forefront of audio compression. Like when they came out with the mini disc, the way they fit that much music on a small disc that was smaller than a CD in size mm -hmm. was they had to use. They use the lossy codec to do that, oh. right? But they're very good at making both lossy and lossless codecs. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, I think that LDAC might still be up there. But the bottom line is this: if you buy a pair of headphones or earbuds today, look on the box and decide for yourself, you know, what it supports. Like a lot of earbuds, even the OnePlus Buds Pro that you're playing with right now that I reviewed last week, they don't support, other than that LHDC codec, they don't support any other high quality codecs. And that only works on OnePlus phones, apparently. Maybe some other phones, but I'm not aware of any. And then AAC is kind of the, the kind of default for a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. in Apple world. Mm -hmm. So like AirPods Pro and etc. A lot of people are using AAC. That's kind of like the the, the default, the bottom line of everybody's sure. use right now. And then SBC is kind of like backwards compatibility for anything Bluetooth audio that, you know, predates that, right? So if you have an old car stereo in your car, SBC. If you have an old pair of headphones or earbuds, that's Bluetooth, SBC probably. Some of them have AC, and then now some of them have LDAC, and then of course now Aptex has been around for a while. But as you said, there's so many versions of Aptex that are really complicated for people. And so... Technically, this is Aptek Lossy is the new thing they launched, but it's part of the Aptex family. So if you have a device with Snapdragon Sound, you're guaranteed that it'll work with Aptex Lossy, Aptex Adaptive, Aptex HD, and Aptex Low Latency, which I believe are all the versions, and then Aptex Default, which are, again, all of Qualcomm's custom Bluetooth codecs. I believe that the... Uh, I was asking the guy when we were doing the demo, so for the demos that they had us, try out they had the 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 i don't i forgot what they're called the buds that came with the snapdragon phone for insiders the insider buds those yeah yeah they're made <laughs> by um who makes them i don't and i can't remember the name it's like uh it's like some luxuries audio brand yeah, yeah they've been around forever so this is actually a rebranded version from what i gather mm -hmm. but that actually is 
made to support 100% all of the Snapdragon sound features. Yes. So those buds, I was asking him about latency. Like, what is the official latency of aptX Adaptive, which is Snapdragon Sound, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the the new one. And uh, he said it was, uh, he was like, oh, I think it's under 100 milliseconds. But then someone else confirmed, like, I think it's 89. 89 milliseconds. So it's not really... I mean, it's, that's, not, it's not the lowest. That's great for listening to music. Okay for video, if you want sync video with audio. Because ideally you want, you want less than 50, ideally less than 30 milliseconds for video audio sync. And then for video games, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. But that's why they have aptX low latency. It's yeah. not as high quality. But if you're playing a game, I don't think you need that level of sound quality anyway. You just need really low latency. Sure. So... I think they have everything cornered. I, you know, I have a lot of questions around all of what we saw today. Part of me is kind of want to be, you know, wanting to be a little cynical because it's like a lot of marketing speak. I feel like how are they going to evolve this once they add another codec to it? This, this is not the end. There's going to be another aptX something, probably a combination of lossless and low latency. And then do they now call it Snapdragon Sound 2.0? That's a great question. I mean... The question I don't have the answer to, but well, you should no. <laughs> um, blue. But here's the thing: what's the future of Bluetooth? Because these are codecs that work on Bluetooth, but not all devices use this codec. So it's like Bluetooth is like the universal, you know, uh, the universal, I guess, vessel that carries all this the sound and these codecs. And then you have to, and then each codec is really compatible with specific devices. So. Does that complicate things? It does. And that's the problem I have is that, you know, look, personally, my favorite headphones for on the go wireless are the Sony's, right? Like I, I, there's a combination of things. It's wireless. It's the fact that they have amazing ANC. If you're going to go wireless, you want ANC because you might be on an airplane or whatever. And then they also sound fantastic and they can be tuned with the Sony app for EQ and the EQ lives in the headphones, mm, not on your phone. That's great so point. if you pair with another completely foreign to you device, you get the EQ settings you want. Uh -huh. They stay with you unless you factory reset the headphones. And I think that's something I would say, you yeah, know, maybe you can have like a, a little Bluetooth primer for people. If you're going to buy wireless earbuds or headphones today, whether you get ANC, which is active noise canceling or not, you know, that's a that's a price decision at this point. Eventually, it'll be common on anything. But the thing to look out for, I think, is do they sound the way you like them out of the box? And if they don't, can you tweak that? And if you can tweak it, is that tweaking happening inside the earbuds or in an app on the phone that stays on the phone? If it stays with the phone, meaning like, say, you use... Say you use uh, the Spotify, and Spotify has an EQ and you change it in there, then it's only Spotify that is going to sound right for you, right? Yeah. If you have an EQ in the phone, like, you know, some phones have an EQ in the settings that applies to everything, that only applies for those earbuds because as soon as you plug another pair in, you need to change all these EQ settings again. Yeah. So having the EQ happen inside the earbud or headphone is the way you want to go because you don't have to worry about what the phone is doing. Right. Yeah. So the bottom line is, if you buy pair headphones or earbuds, make sure that if you can tweak them, those tweaking those settings stay with the earbuds and headphones, and that's the way to go. Sony does that. So for me, you know, my favorite earbuds and headphones—not earbuds, but headphones—are definitely the Sony's. And the reason, a big part for me, is a combination of things: it's the good ANC, good sound quality, good wireless performance but also the fact that I have these settings baked in and it stays with the headphones. And of course, you know, they're pricey and you get what you pay for. But LDAC, which is what they use for high quality, supposedly lossless audio, I feel really sounds great. And I mean, lossless is lossless. It's gonna sound great no matter what technology you use, right? So, so I'm on board with Qualcomm doing their own thing, frankly. It doesn't matter to me. It's just that how long is it going to be before everybody's on board? Because Sony doesn't, I don't think Sony supports aptX. No, because it's a Qualcomm codec. But you know, there are, com there are headphones, my Shures support both LDAC and AAC and aptX HD. I should say all three. But okay, so 
LDAC is supported. Is is LDAC supported on Qualcomm devices, or is it specifically Sony phones? So the guy we were talking to today said the LDAC is is supported on that. Oh, okay. They have it as well. Okay. So, I guess what happens is if you pair your Snapdragon Sound headphones and earbuds with a Snapdragon phone, you by default probably get Snapdragon Sound Aptex lossless. Mm -hmm. And then if it, if you pair with a phone that doesn't have that, you get to fall back on whatever AAC or SBC at the worst, but you know this is that's my point. It's all a big mystery. It's like you can still buy something that says Snapdragon Sound on the box and still not get the best sound quality out of it. This is true. So I'm not sure they're solving a problem. Is what I'm trying to so say. That's the cynical part of me that's saying that. It's like I'm not sure. Like I appreciate what Qualcomm's trying to do, but I also feel like because it's up to the manufacturers of headphones and earbuds and phones to really implement these things do we actually benefit you know is there going to be 100 percent compatibility to the point where you can just blindly buy snapdragon sound on one thing and another and it'll just work i'd like to think so that's what i think they're trying to achieve but every time qualcomm announces cool new features as part of a snapdragon chip we don't necessarily see these features in the phones that they release with these chips it's up to Samsung and Sony and, you know, OnePlus or whatever to say, oh, well, I want Aptex and I want, you know. So it's going to be up to, it's going to be up to Qualcomm to tell the OEMs, listen, we have uh, Snapdragon sound on however many partners for headphones and speakers and, and audio devices. But like you said, it's going to depend on whether those manufacturers want to implement um, Snapdragon Sound, and then will it cost them from Qualcomm to implement like a licensing fee? Did anybody fee? ask that question? Because nope. I don't know. that's a great, that's a great question. Nobody asked. Wow, actually. we're gonna have to ask them tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is there a licensing fee? Like, what is it? What is this solving a problem? It's it's kind of a solution that creates another problem. I mean, it's just it's it's just it's business. It's business. Yeah. Look, I'm I'm not trying to be negative. I feel this is a step forward. Audio is so full of different standards, it's very messed up, and it's not anybody's specific fault. We can't blame Qualcomm for trying to do their own thing here because a lot of people use Qualcomm technology, like not people, companies, right? So by having, it's kind of killing a lot of birds with one stone in many ways, right? Of course, Sony is going to do their own thing because Sony is a sound, you know, has a lot of sound expertise. You know, of course, I can see some of the Chinese phone manufacturers doing their own thing, like Huawei, because they have a lot of internal R&D, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure what OnePlus is doing with uh, LHDC cord, frankly. I, it's my first time hearing about this codec. I need to kind of dig around to see what it's about. But I, I guess, basically, they're trying to make their own ecosystem, really, is what it sounds like. I mean, it could just be they're licensing it from Huawei or something. Like, the bottom line is it's a fragmented universe no matter what you do. And I think audio is so old in terms of, you know, even digital audio today is, you know, it started in the late 70s. So we're talking 40 40 years of legacy to deal with and standards and they kind of pile up on each other. It's like, you know, kind of like the headphone jack still exists in some parts. I'm for it because it's a universal adapter that works with everything. But I can understand why companies like Apple and others have been wanting to remove it because they're like, well, it's one more thing we need to put in there that is just legacy. It's just baggage, right? Sure. And so, you know, it's like SBC audio codec or is baggage too, right? Like we're eventually going to get rid of it. But yeah. the first time you buy a product that doesn't support SPC, it's not, it's going to pair okay with your car radio from 1995, but it's not going to play audio. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the problem you run into. Yeah. And so people have, we can't have that. Technology just keeps moving. Right. We, what it is. Because right? we can't have that. That's why we have how many codecs that we talked about already? Like six? I lost count. <laughs> so that's the problem. So anyway, this this Qualcomm thing, I think it's it's good news. I'm happy to hear them launch a lossless codec for Aptex, and I'm happy to to see them trying to market this somehow. But I'm a little also like mm, I'm not sure where this is going because they again being very shy about telling us. Remember, I asked the question and I couldn't get an answer. And it's I just was like, there. I'll tell you what right now. What you asked? You said I'm oh. sorry for what did you say? Because you asked about. When will devices? When will we be able to see devices that support this with new hardware? And he was kind of like, uh, "I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you, but we'll tell you in December." 
And he was like, sorry for that shitty answer. <laughs> no, he was up front. I think my question was more like, I was trying to establish whether you needed, whether if you bought a pair of headphones like yesterday, right, that had Aptex, you know, support in it, whether it works with this new codec if you get a firmware update. Yes, that's that all was I was what saying. You, that like, was what I'm you not asked. expecting like a pair of headphones from two years ago to work with sure. this, but I'm thinking like if you're a company that used the latest chip like from this year for, for sound from Qualcomm on your headphones or earbuds, mm -hmm. can you benefit from lossless through a firmware update? And I don't think they are able to answer that right now. Mm. I they, my, they, my gut, they might not know either. Yeah, my gut feeling is that they're going to have to use the new chip, the Snapdragon sound chip that has yeah. that in there. So, yeah. What's your takeaway overall? Overall, the event it was. I mean, the event was a. It was a. It was a bit flashy, for like a codec, but you know what? It has us talking about audio. It has us talking about what is coming from audio. About trying to trying to reach the quality that we lost by taking out the headphone jack. That's what we're really talking about. Yeah. You know, just like what you said. Like the, the headphone jack is. It's uh, it's really it really is just to keep pushing past the need for wires. Yeah, absolutely. So I think for me the takeaway is, I would take this with a grain of salt. Like if you're about to buy headphones and earbuds, just read the reviews. Make sure you can return them if you don't like the way they sound, because sometimes yes you can tweak the sound, but again, unless you can tweak the sound like using the firmware inside the earbud or headphones through the company's app, it's going to be a challenge to use these and have them sound right on every device. And then I wouldn't wait for Snapdragon sound. I would just go ahead and get whatever you need now. And then eventually this Aptex lossless will just be baked into pretty much everything that you can buy out there. And then it'll be solved, problem solved, right? So yeah. give it a bit of time. You know, that's my, my advice to people listening. Yeah, definitely. Especially since everyone's ears are different. Everyone experiences sound different. Everyone has different tastes. Everyone, some people like bass more. Some people don't. Yeah. Some people want a more balanced sound. It's it's all it's all different. You're never gonna please everyone, and that's also why there are so many headphones and earbuds out there. They all sound slightly different, and everybody has a different taste. And I think that's totally legit. You know, and that's why you should always try before you buy, or at least have the ability to send it back if you don't like it. And again, I feel like. If you don't like the way they sound, yes, you can maybe tweak them, but that's a crutch, right? Remember that. Ultimately, buy the ones that sound great out of the box. You never have to worry about it. I think that's always been the case with anything that's yeah. audio, right? You buy the speaker, you buy the stereo, whatever. You buy the car radio, you buy the... That sounds right for you, and that's it. But at the same time, be aware what... There are some things you can do to improve things, and lossless audio makes a difference. You might not notice it if you're not used to listening to lossless audio, but it's like less bland. It's it's hard to put into words. You just have to kind of experience it. I, I okay. Actually, I was trying to put that into words today when I was doing the demo, just to bring back the topic because I think we're wrapping up the topic real quick. But in the demo phone, I was I was playing the song, and I had the the, the Snapdragon sound buds in master and dynamic. That's the name of the brand. Sorry. <laughs> he popped up. That's okay. We Dang. finally know. Master Dynamic. Yes, that's the name of the brand. So it was very slight details that were like, like think of if it was a full body sound and then the lower codec kind of carved out some of the details. That's exactly what happened. That's 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 how. If you didn't know it was missing, you wouldn't notice it necessarily. Right. But as soon as you hear the like the lossless version, the non like degraded version, you're like, oh, breath of fresh air. And you might, it's subtle, like you have to be in a quiet space and with the right equipment, but you will immediately be like, it seems more alive. It seems more, it's like, it's got more taste to it. Like more, you know, like the difference between, you know, cheap sushi and good sushi. It's yeah. like, it's, it's sushi. It's going to be great no matter sure. what, but there's a whole level of, finesse in the taste of it that you really notice on the fancier stuff what about okay so someone brought this up josh brought this up he said what about the audio they were playing to us was saved on the phone yeah it wasn't being streamed no so is music that's right now streamable going to be able to 
are we going to be able to benefit from this even because this music is going to be compressed anyway? I think if you uh, stream from a lossless provider, like I can't remember, there's a bunch of them out there, but or a high quality provider, you, you're, you're going to benefit because the, the problem is this, is that if you're just listening to like, you know, bass quality setting in Spotify or in Google Play Music, I mean, it's not called that now, YouTube Music yeah. or whatever, right? Or Apple Music, you have settings, at least I don't know about Apple Music, but at least in, you know, Google's universe, you can set it to high quality sure. and actually gives you a higher bit rate. And so it's still lossy audio, but in the past with SPC and AAC, you were degrading that between your phone and your earbuds and headphones. Yeah. Nowadays, with lossless, you guarantee that that part is eliminated. It's like that wire that comes out of the headphone jack to your headphones in the old way is exactly the same analogy of lossless, right? Yeah. So it won't improve, but it won't worsen. That is true. But if you start with like one of the lossless providers, sure. like streaming services, then you're going to immediately notice a difference. It's going to make a huge difference because you're already used to, you know, probably by this point you're listening to wired headphones and you're probably used to how great it sounds. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm getting that back with wireless. That's my, my guess. Because I don't subscribe to a lossless provider. Most of my lossless audio on my phone is download. Like it's, it's I copy it over mm -hmm. because it's just too much of a hassle. And I don't really keep that much. Like I just for testing mostly sure. because when generally when I listen to lossless audio, I might have a computer at home and I have a big library to choose from. And I tend to listen to like Flack and usually, you know, I'm, I'm pretty agnostic about like, I'm not one of those, even though I'm my background's in audio and video games, I'm not one of those people's like, oh, it has to be this kind of file and this kind of sample rate or whatever. I'm more like, I'll take the best you can give me for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Like. I can't really tell the difference between a really good recording at 44.116 versus 96.24. And the reason for that, I think, is because I actually upsample everything. Mm. So I take any audio going out of my computer gets turned into 96.24. Now, a lot of people, this is a very, there's a lot of debate in the industry around this, whether sure. it makes a difference or not. But personally, having been in the audio working in business for a long time, I really think that upsampling is half the battle. I don't even think we need to deliver music, like absolutely deliver it lossless. But do we need to deliver it more than 44.116? I'm not convinced. However, if you upsample that to 96.24, you benefit. So that's how I listen to everything wired is 96.24 and anything that's not that anything that's lossless obviously gets gets the benefit but anything i t i listen to a ton of music uh, on youtube music and that's all like lossy and yeah. i'm not unhappy <laughs> <laughs> i think the reality i'm trying to get to is that if you make sure that every part of the audio chain is as high quality as you can even if you start with a source that's a little compromise because it's lossy, you're still going to benefit. And that's exactly what this is about because now it's lossless between the headphone and the phone, right? Mm -hmm. That's the same as having a wire plugged into a headphone jack. And we didn't have that before. So apparently, although I still think LDAC is lossless. <laughs> <laughs> and now I need to research this. Yeah, as you can see, this whole podcast is going to be, oh, well, I should research this. What's the name <laughs> of that company again? <laughs> Let's switch gears to the Pixel 6. Go, lots of rumors. We got. We all had a panic attack collectively, I think, as journalists when we heard a rumor that the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro was going to launch on the 13th. Now, this was only a rumor, the 13th of September. And to be clear, there's another rumor, because of freaking September, that Apple is going to launch a new iPhones on the 14th of September. And you know how they do things. Like we should be finding out today or tomorrow because if they do the 14th, it's usually two weeks before that they make mm -hmm. the announcement. So that didn't sound right to me. Well, I, I saw the rumors too, and I did write about one leak. I guess it's a leak on an Oppo phone in China. When you asked the assistant, like the, I think it's Brimo, Brino. Brino? Is the Chinese assistant of Oppo phones. Uh -huh. When you asked it when Android 12 would come out, it said September 13th. Or when Color OS 12 would come out, it said September 13th. But then they changed ah. it 
they changed it and removed it like oh coming soon so that that's what, what the spe- that's one of the the leaks that i saw i think there was other corroborating leaks that i didn't see but that was one of the reasons why people were saying android 12 is going to launch on september 13th and that's probably what led to saying people saying the pixel will be launched on september 13th so but it's not always been launched with the pixels right not like there has been times remember that there were f- times when it launched on another format of pixel remember that yeah like um one plus once didn't they uh, years ago? i think yeah one year uh like the new android version came out like the first phone that had it was a one plus phone but the pixels had already received the software I think. right 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 yeah but yeah I, I feel like normally or lg i think i remember an lg phone as well i i think that normally the Pixels that are out now get updated when Android 12 is launched, yeah. and then the new Pixel comes out. Exactly. Does that sound about right? That's so, exactly how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, so it might be October before we see the So Pixel. this is the latest rumor. The latest rumor is that it would be an October 19th pre-order and October 28th actual, like, you can buy one. Pixels have historically launched in October. And that makes perfect sense. Yeah, this is, this is from yesterday. Uh, da, 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 da. And in case you guys are wondering, you folks are watching this or listening right now, Ricky is going to the source of all news, GSM Arena, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we we write from we 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 credited the source, which was an exclusive from FrontPageTech.com. Yeah, they were they got a lot of views on that one. But let's see what. Am this I right is. on those dates? Oh yeah yeah yeah. So it says uh. While the September 13th date was meant to be for the announcement, the, in, the new info says the Pixels will be released on October 28th, as in, that's when they will become available. Pre-orders are allegedly set to start on October 19th. Um, I memorized that somehow. <laughs> so uh, it says that this doesn't fully... This doesn't mean that there might not be an, an event on the September 13th. Uh, but we would know by now. Da, 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 which means the 28th pans out. Likely time for announcement will be the 18th or 19th. Mm, so they're speculating that October 18th or 19th would could be a possible uh or maybe a week launch day that. yeah, yeah, yeah. As a quick, 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 I'm betting yeah. on a week that week of before the 18th sometime we'll have an event and whether it'll be a virtual event or a real event I'm not sure it'll be Google could have probably done IO in person this year because vaccinations were a thing but they went virtual so I think I think it was a safer thing to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was I mean, a good idea, but I mean, because yeah, because because uh, in what was it May? I think in April. Yeah, uh, not enough people were vaccinated. Not enough. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. Because I didn't get that. I didn't get my second dose until the end of April. Yeah, me too. So yeah. you're right. That was. But my point is, I mean, we don't know right now whether it's going to be when this event's going to be and whether it's going to be a in person event or not. But I would expect them to have. You know, they are putting a lot of effort into marketing this thing. It's very clear to me. Yeah. You know, I had Max Weinbach on the show weeks ago and we talked. That he's kind of one who dropped it on, like, the <laughs> exclusive on my show that, yeah, the, the marketing budget for this is going to be, they're getting real. So I wouldn't be surprised if some sort of in-person event. And that's why by now I would have assumed we would have heard something. I'm excited for this Pixel because me it's, too. It's, it's a huge change for Pixel in it general. It is so good. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to it. Yeah. And if um, their marketing budget is going higher, they're just, they're ready. They're trying to compete for that iPhone space. So we now know, by the way, that's the leak of the, the week. Because I don't cover all the leaks, but this is a slow news week. So we're going to go down leak rabbit hole. <laughs> um, wireless charging at 23 watt with a new Pixel stand is the, um, is the news, the leak, I should say, the rumor. So what do you think of that? That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, um, I can't say that I've seen the leak because I have actually just found out about it today. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, the Pixel Stand came out with the Pixel Three, I believe. And yeah, it was, it was, I think, what twelve to fifteen watts. Yeah, it does some kind of custom mode for the Pixels, but then it falls back to being a standard ten watt charger, I think, yeah. for everything else, or five watt even. Is there a picture of it, or it's just a rumor? I'm on the Verge here, and it says that it appeared in somebody's ordering system. So there's no picture, there's just this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I just looked up Pixel, <laughs> I just looked up Pixel Stand on GSM Arena and the first thing to come up was about the previous one. 
The Pixel, the Google Pixel stand is an unreliable, expensive mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! The first one. <laughs> oh boy! All right, so let's see. Yeah. So, so it's a retail source. One of the U.S. carriers has already started input, uh, putting in accessories in for the Pixel Six, and so the name is Google Pixel Thirty Three Watt WL stand. Ooh, WL. I wonder what that's. Wireless. For. Lossless. <laughs> Nice tie. Uh, I was going to say wireless Lego, but I don't know where that came from. Okay. So, yeah, we're still far from the 50 watt wireless charging from the OnePlus. But look, the reality is we expect this thing to have wireless charging, but more importantly, we expect this to be slightly faster wireless charging. So, this makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm on board with that. It's a step up for sure. Yeah. Right. And I'm trying to figure out what other leaks and news has been on the Pixel 6 because there's been a few things. This this big date announcement thing has definitely been like the one that gave us all a heart attack. But the new the rumor is that Samsung is making the millimeter wave modem for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. So that's another piece of news that came out this past week. So that is interesting like i mean look i have no issues with this not being qualcomm you know base this uh -huh. year yeah i believe it'll be fine but we have to admit that when it comes to radios the qualcomm equipped phones always overperform versus the rest like remember how for that year of the 11 or whatever apple had to go to intel for their modem yes and i remember that side by drama. side, it wasn't as good as a, as a Qualcomm modem for yeah. the same network at the same speed and the same mm -hmm. location. And so, you know, obviously now Apple and Qualcomm are best buddies. So I'm pretty sure the 5G in the iPhone 12 is Qualcomm 5G. and the But the millimeter wave antennas are from Apple. So, uh, oh, yeah, the antennas, they're using yes. their, they, they, they made they, their they, own. Right? I remember. They, so, so normally, if you get a Qualcomm radio, you're going to always, I mean, you generally are going to go nuts and, and go the whole Qualcomm way if you're a manufacturer and get their own millimeter wave antennas, which are, I think, on their third gen now. So, but it, so that's why I'm kind of like, I'm sure they're not going to put something in there that's not going to work. So I'm sure it'll be okay. But will it perform as well as a Qualcomm millimeter wave solution? Who knows? And does it matter? Because who uses millimeter wave right now? Not a lot. I mean, no, not really. No. Only Verizon, so they can. Ricky says no. No. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, millimeter wave is it's not as sustain it's not sustainable at least in the short term to have so many five G nodes like millimeter wave is unless they figure out some hybrid between millimeter wave and sub six gigahertz but i don't i don't even know it's it's too complicated this this is the title of the podcast i don't even know <laughs> i don't even know i don't even know <laughs> everything is just brushed under the carpet <laughs> yeah so i these are i think our pixel rumors let's switch over to the um, I, i'm kind of excited about the galaxy s21 fan edition the upcoming. I mean, it's been rumored on and off for weeks now. The biggest issue with that phone is the fact that it's been on and it's been off. It's been on and it's been off because of the supply chain, right? So sure. Samsung obviously makes S21 line and it kind of covers all the bases. And as you know, in the US here, those of you abroad probably don't get that benefit. But here in the US, you can get the S21s on sale all the time, oh my gosh. especially the through time. your carriers. And you can get a really good deal. So for those of us who are enthusiasts and look at the unlocked price of a phone, the S21 fan edition last year and this upcoming if it ever comes out s21 fan edition are very compelling because they're giving us really good specs for really low money but in the us it doesn't really make that much sense when you can get a really good deal on s21 any time of day right so i'm not against it i'm just saying that i could see a case where samsung would say you know we're going to skip the s21 fan edition this year because we can't get the chips supply issues or whatever yeah and we'll revisit that next year like they looks like they're doing for the note right yes and so so that's legit but because of that the rumors and leaks have been on and off on and off it's coming oh no it's put on hold oh in a few months oh no next week and that's what we're getting this 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 time around it's it's the 
it's coming and then oh it might be a, it might be a few more weeks so what's the latest you found the latest the latest was written actually last night um there you go see the, I knew it was the galaxy s21 fe user manual apparently leaked and it, uh, it there's no micro sd card slot and there's no charger in the box Ooh, that's a step back for an, a fan edition last year's fan edition had sd is there a headphone jack? Uh, another thing the manual reveals is that the Galaxy S21 FE will not ship with a charger in the box or a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. A move that shouldn't be surprising considering that all of the Korean companies' recent flagships have gone the Apple way and got rid of these things. Yeah, and also there's no is there they don't there's no headphone jack in the S20 fan edition. Uh, if they're mentioning that there is not, then there probably was on the 20. I can't remember. Let's let's let's, let's Google it. The GSM Marina right here, all the specs. What do you know, what do you know about oh, that? Oh, that's right. That's my data. I use it for all the things, all the <laughs> all time. The, all the things. Okay, let's find out. All right, Audio. so 3.5. There. No, there is no jack. <laughs> okay, so I was right. Okay. Okay, but I feel like I feel like one of them did. Am I, am I wrong? No, maybe, you're wrong. Maybe the 4G one had it? No. Oh. No, they don't have one. They don't have one. Okay. But it did have the micro SD. Yeah, it did have micro yeah, SD. Yeah, okay. So there we go. Um, so I expect, look, folks, I expect this to be very competitive with last year. I, here's what I'm thinking. I don't know, but my gut feeling, if I were Samsung and I want to make an S21 FE, glass stick back. Glass stick? They're plastic that looks like glass. Okay. They that's actually, the first time I heard that term. They officially was... call it glass stick. Really? They, yeah, that's the Samsung brand. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So glass stick back, like last year, like the S21 sure. base. Um, metal frame. No headphone jack, no micro SD, we know that. But I think in terms of processor, I wouldn't, I don't expect this to be an 888. I expect this to be an 870. Because price. And here's the thing. The 870 is a phenomenal chip. It's an 865 plus, plus. So it's on steroids. And <laughs> is, as we know, the cooling on the 888 is a big issue. Like if you don't get the cooling right on the 888, your battery suffers and your performance dives if you're long-term playing sure. games or something. So for the kind of audience that the fan edition is designed for, the fans who are more likely to be early adopter tech savvy gamer types, you want, you know, a nice cooling solution. It's really easy to do on the 865 family. Mm -hmm. So 865 plus and 870. So that's why I'm betting on an 870. Um, here on the article, what are they suggesting? Um, they're also saying the manual. They're they're talking about what else the manual is confirming. The manual also confirms other specs of the S twenty one FE, such as the ultrasonic in display fingerprint scanner, the IP sixty eight dust and water resistance rating, high refresh rate screen, as well as the design, which is unsurprisingly very similar to that of the S twenty one family. Additionally, we know that the phone will be covered in, well, the phone will be offered in four colors: black, green, purple, and white. Wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, Samsung Pay, Dex, and Atmos. Oh, interesting. So the Verge story, what I'm looking at right now, says Exynos 2100 or, 80, or Snapdragon 888. Oh, yes. Uh, the Galaxy S21 FE is expected to be powered by the 888 chip in some markets and the Exynos 2100 okay, and others. Okay, so I guess I'm wrong on the 870. I mean, this is just expect what's expected. Yeah, but it, look, the reality is when these rumors come around, they're generally correct. Remember, Samsung <laughs> manufactures the 888 for Qualcomm. I didn't know that. Well, now I know. So, <laughs> who knows? I'm I don't pretty know. sure. Like, I don't think TSMC is doing it this time. Okay. So, as such, they're probably at first dibs. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? I see. So, that's probably why they can put an 888 in there. Anyway, look. All we know is it may be coming, it may not be coming, but if it does come, it should be coming pretty soon. But I don't think like September. I think we're looking, last year we, it was October ish or late September, early October. So if it's coming, I don't expect Samsung to do anything differently in terms of timing. If they do any later than that, it seems to be really late. Yeah. Because the S22, you know, it's going to come out early in the year. Like they're trying to get this, the FE out, I'm sure, before the holiday season. And if it does come out, my gut feeling is it's either going to come out like the normal date, like we expect early October, late, Fe late September, mm -hmm. or it will not come out at all. And if it doesn't come out at all, there's also another in between where it's like the Pixel 5a. Mm -hmm. They're only going to release it in like five markets. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like Korea, US, and maybe like two other countries in Europe or something. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because remember, in India, they have the A series. They have a lot of different, they have a lot of variety of, of lower cost phones there, yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting, you know, I want to go back to the F, 
S20 FE of last year. Yeah. I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like Samsung was just like, here, OnePlus, hold my beer. Let me show you how <laughs> we can make a phone that's just like a OnePlus phone used to be. Yeah. Because by this time, OnePlus, had, I think, had already dropped the ball in terms of making phones other than the Nord, right? The, the original Nord mm -hmm. and the Nord 2, which, by the way, I have in my pocket, which is absolutely sublime. Other than those two phones in the last few years, they really haven't delivered that flagship at a really good price. Mm. I mean, they've delivered great phones, but no longer the price leader. And it's amazing to me that Samsung just came out and said, oh, well, we can make a phone like that. Let, let me show you. <laughs> well, do you think with the A-series that they, that they have some competition within their own devices, at least in the U.S.? Yeah, they do. Yeah. I mean, the A-series, I think, is a different beast. You know, the A-series, I, I might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure no no A series is OIS, for example. Oh. Or F every S series is OIS. Yeah. So I think there's things like that that are really still differentiating. But sure. again, look, micro SD is being dropped on the S21 FE. So I hope they never drop OIS. Samsung's very smart. They haven't done that yet. Whereas, you know, we see this happening so much, like OnePlus dropping OIS on the OnePlus 9, the base model. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Like what were they thinking? Do you know the Nord 2 has OIS with that no. same with that same 766 sensor? Wow. The one that's used on the ultra wide yeah. on the nine? It's rock solid. Okay. It is so good. Yeah. I don't understand. Like other than the lack of wireless charging to me, the OnePlus Nord 2 is a better phone than is the Is the nine. Nord 2 coming in the US? No. That's that's why they oh, did it. No, the carriers would completely lose their freaking. That's minds. why they did it. Yeah. Probably. Like the, the they see the US as a premium market, and then maybe the budget but market. But then why not put OIS on the nine? Like that's a big omission. And when you're gonna put it on the Nord two? Because they want you to get the pro. Ah, uh, point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, what a sneaky thing to do. That's just wrong. <laughs> oh well. Um, <laughs> um, what can you do? All right. The next topic is the rumors around the Microsoft Surface Duo two. What do you think of that thing? Did you ever play with the original? I uh, I have a friend that works for Microsoft, like retail, Ooh. retail though. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. oh, he's not important. <laughs> no, he works for he works for uh, Best Buy retail. He had the the first Duo that I got to play with. Some whenever I saw him, sometimes I would play with it, and like it feels great. It's so thin, like the hinge feels awesome. It's like. It's impossibly thin. How like no, that, I've that, played that it. device. Like I, it's, I'm very impressed by it. Now the, and the hinge feels so nice. So it opens like it's hard to explain to people until you touch it and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know? so the the duo is an interesting phone because it's not quite, it's not polished yet. It still needs like one or two more iterations before it can be a recommendable phone. Because you've, yeah, you've seen the sales okay. of the first generation. Yeah. They, they I mean, dropped to $400. I'm not even looking at the sales. I mean, the biggest issue to me with that phone was the cameras are really poor and it has no NFC. So how mm. do you do contactless payment, right? Oh, but so five hours ago, September oh. 1st, 2021, Microsoft announced a Surface event for September 22nd. There it is. So whether that means we're getting a new Surface Duo 2, is that what it's called? Duo, right? I guess uh, Surface. No, Surface Duo. Yeah, Surface Duo. But yeah. this would be version two of it. Surface so Duo. So I'm calling two. it Surface Duo. Two. They should call it the Surface Duo. Duo. But I'm pulling. So yeah, the last rumor was um, the last rumor was that it would come with a Snapdragon 888. That's right. We've seen leaks since July of this with so... eight gigs of RAM. That was the. And then obviously we and saw better the, cameras and a camera pod actually. We saw camera. that that there was going to be cameras on the outside instead of that one singular internal camera. So they're going to and I believe NFC was finally. I mean, obviously, and Snapdragon eight 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 and five G right because that other one had an eight fifty five in it. Eight fifty five. So was four G. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the, the days of four G, Ricky? Yeah, there's a, there there's... was a time when four G <laughs> was the thing. I don't know. I mean, uh, I remember when. I remember, if you want to go way back, I know. We were talking about why. I'm making the joke that half the people listening to this still are not on five G, and we're just pretending it's been around forever. Um, no, I hear 2008. you. Two thousand and eight. I went through the growing pains because I'm a T-Mobile customer of twenty years since the Voice Stream acquisition. Nice. I almost left around the time when they were rolling out three G on. A on AT&T, HSPA Plus, mm -hmm. and they hadn't rolled out, they, were, they had already rolled out 
big 3G, which I call eVideo on the horizon, because uh-huh. it wasn't as fast as real 3G, like 2.75G, if you want to call that. Sure. Um, definitely better than 2.5G, which was Edge. But Verizon was in CDMA land in their own world, but sure. Timo was still on 2G only. And the G1 came out, mm-hmm. and it, 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 had, it was the first one that had 3G okay. on their network. But they, they were a good six months to a year behind AT&T, a singular, on their rollout, on their rollout okay. of 3G. And I was hurting, <laughs> and I almost left. But then I'm glad I stuck around because their 4G rollout was great. It was on time, and their 5G rollout has been superb. They are absolutely the best 5G in this. I mean, don't take it from me. Oh, there's a piece of news. Sasha Segan finally published the PC Mag, um, you know, 5G speed test. Ah, that they, they do. And okay. The takeaway is Timo is best. Right? right. Nice. But that's because C-Band hasn't been kicked on for Verizon and uh, AT and T yet. As soon as that happens, though, should be an interesting, interesting story. Look, I'm. I think 5G is in many ways carrying the phone industry right now because this COVID is hurting a little bit, but a lot of people are upgrading their phones to get 5G. Whether they need to or not is a whole different story, but the carriers are pushing it hard. Like I kept joking for the last few podcasts that you can walk into a T-Mobile store and probably course them without trying too hard to give you a free phone with 5G. They're so eager to give you 5G. Yeah. So take this as you will, audience. Okay, go visit your T-Mobile store if you want 5G, and I'm sure you can work something out with them because they have, I mean, the cheapest phone that I reviewed for them is the $200 Revel V Plus 5G, Yeah, and it doesn't suck. Okay. It is surprisingly good, that phone, for the money. Who manufactures that? I was wondering. Oh, well, so we had this discussion on the last show, no, the show here in New York two weeks ago, Okay, but I'm going to reiterate for those who are listening. Because I looked at that phone and I have the other phone I'm comparing it to, okay. the TCL 20 SE okay. of the 20 series, the cheapest of the TCL yeah. 20 series. If you put them side by side, they're dead ringers. Really? Yeah, almost it's identical. TC- so it's TCL? It's not TCL. I talked to Brad. Okay, yeah. I said, Brad, come on. <laughs> Look at these two phones. He Look goes, I know, right? And I'm like, tell me, tell me what you're doing here. Even if you can't tell me on the record, like he goes, no, I can, I can actually tell you on the record. This is not made by TCL. Okay. This is made by Wing Tech, a company out of Hong Kong for T-Mobile. But the display is the same, same aspect ratio, same resolution, mm. same teardrop notch, same everything. The chassis has more slap sides, like the iPhone today versus mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. 11 before, you know. Yeah. Whereas the SE is kind of the 11 routed sides. Of course, the SE is running. A Snapdragon 460, I want to say, so 4G. But this thing is running a MediaTek Diamond C700. Woohoo, one of my favorite <sighs> chips. It's the it's really nice and fast and really cheap, and it gives you 5G. The cameras are, you know, what you expect for a 200 dollars phone. There's a there's a there's an ultra wide, which is nice, but they're not great. But the bottom line is they're usable in the sense that if you play with Google Photos for two seconds, you can make them look great. That's not bad. Like, you know, like and the battery is huge, 5,000 milliamp hour, lasts forever. It's a big phone. The screen is like 6.8 inches. Oh, wow. But it's long and skinny, so mm. it doesn't feel too bad in that. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not saying you should buy that phone if you buy a 5G phone on T-Mobile, but if you really are jonesing for 5G on T-Mobile, I can bet you they'll give you that phone for free with some sort of plan change or something. And then if you want something a little more, you know, fancy, if, if that's probably not the right word, but a little higher up than that, the OnePlus Nord N200 5G that I reviewed mm. recently, superb phone. Cameras are, mm, again, I actually think the cameras on the $200 phone are better than the cameras on the OnePlus the 240. Okay. But the OnePlus gives you that Oxygen OS, really fast, really slick, and gives you a 1080p screen, which is much better than a 720. And it gives you, you know, generally speaking, just a, a better experience. So for 40 bucks more, yeah, I'm I'm stoked. I think that 5G with C band, you know, being available for AT&T and Verizon soon, we're going to see a ton of 5G affordable phones for a ton of carriers in this country. And I'm really hoping that wherever you live it's the same. I know that India is still waiting to get their 5G game on. 
or it's coming soon. Okay. But Europe is there in some parts, and I don't know about Australia. These are my my audiences mostly out mm. there. But don't dismiss five G too much yet. If you are living somewhere where it's clearly not there yet, you know, buy another four G phone for the next year or two. But this is getting harder to find now. I'm I'm an advocate. Well, I guess yeah, you're right. Like now, more new phones are coming with coming with five G already. But if you're in a if you're in a crunch and you need to buy a four G phone, maybe from last year, that'll get that's like a better value for the features and the money. I would I would say go for it. I would say even in the U S. I would say still buy a four G buy a four G. Oh yeah, phone. you'll be fine with the four G phone yeah. for sure. But the speed test that Sasha and his team ran really show that the best speed now it used to be that 4g on timo was about the same as 5g last year that is true and now 5g is just beating 4g in the same place okay. all the time okay in, in fact even across the board most places are six to ten percent faster so i mean it's not gonna make a huge difference but the other thing you have the other side of the coin is that 5g penetrates buildings better at 600 megahertz yes and it also gives you better coverage further away so if you're in a fringe area with Timo right now and you can get a newer phone and assuming they have uh, 600 megahertz in your area you're going to get just better experience like it's going to load a little faster because mm -hmm. you're not bound on that 4g network yeah so you know I'm seeing that a lot with people who are on Timo with an older iPhone, like not, not super old, but like an 11, sure. where they're only 4G, mm -hmm. and they're kind of like next to their buddy with a 5G iPhone, and they're like, whoa, why, why, why are you so much better than me in this particular spot? I'm like, because you need to go to a T-Mobile store and get a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, they really want you to do it, and I think, I wouldn't be surprised, I mean, this is like, I have no evidence to back this up, but part of me is thinking they're probably throttling their 4G a little bit as well to give that bandwidth to 5G and the backhaul. Mm. I mean, now that they are, it's difficult to say. T-Mobile, I mean, they are pushing 5G for sure. And that's because the whole, one of it's the whole spectrum. things. They have so much of it. That too. But one of the whole things about their acquisition is that we're going to roll out the best 5G network. And that's what, that's one of the things that they they uh, advocated so much for, even though they broke their promise on some other things, but that's a different I mean, you know, we didn't talk about the data breach, you know, that T-Mobile just oh had. That's, that's, I, I don't want to get into that, but as a customer, I'm very not happy. I'm annoyed too. I'm um, a customer as well. And But at the same time, you know what? AT&T just had one as well. So like, I mean, I think the reality is big business. If you're a big business, you're, pers you're working big business right now and it interacts with customers data i get you know get your sh together okay like you, you really need to make sure that things are secure because you know people are gonna ha try to hack you no matter what especially if you're a pretty high visibility target like an operator or a bank or whatever right so i just wish that this wasn't the case but i'm honestly not too worried i'm just annoyed yeah yeah you know? same yeah so yeah surface event on the 22nd doesn't just mean we might get a Surface Duo 2, and I wouldn't be surprised based on all these leaks, but I think we're going to see a whole bunch of Surface devices. So so it could also be the Surface Pro 8, because that's been rumored as well for a while. And Windows 11 coming supposedly October oh, 5th. Uh -huh. I mean, this is a little off topic, even though it's mobile, but it's very specific to having a Windows laptop, which is mobile, but I'm just pointing it out. That's another piece of news for the week. The release date is October 5 mm. for Windows 11 on select devices. And it's not the whole suite of features they promised, apparently, which is a bit of a bummer. But that would mean that it would go well together with September 22nd announcement. Because if they announce, if they show the things, then they won't go on sale for a little while. Right. So, yeah. Surface Duo 2. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, no, they're talking about a refresh Surface Pro 7 Plus. Not wasn't a Surface the, Pro 8. Sorry. Wh okay, wasn't the Surface Pro Plus a refresh already? Why are we getting a refresh of a refresh? Well, it, I'm <laughs> just the messenger. Um, that doesn't make sense. Here we, I'm going to quote The Verge again. A Windows 11 launch on October 5th wouldn't be complete without an update to the Surface Pro lineup. Two. Excited yet? Microsoft launched its refreshed Surface Pro 7 Plus earlier this year. Right. So 
we're hoping to see a more refined Surface Pro design. So maybe it is the 8. But okay. I'm reading it more like as a refined of the refresh of the 7 Plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm okay. An eight. You, are you a Surface person? Like using an MSI laptop right here in yeah, front of us? Yeah, no, I don't have a Surface. That's like a gaming creator laptop? It's a gaming laptop, yeah. It's one of the first ones that had the six core Intels. Ooh. Yeah, so it's great so, for editing. So it's co like a couple of years old or something? About, yeah. You do a Premiere? I do. Uh, I used to. Oh. I used to, but now I use Resolve. Oh, Officially you're switched one to of the, I'm not worthy, <laughs> I'm not, what a real professional, uh, you're like Kogan, yeah, Resolve. Yeah, he, yeah, I mean, he and, did he get you? <laughs> both him and Josh, because he told me that if you buy the pro version, the, the studio version, then it harnesses your GPU. The free version of DaVinci does not harness GPU, ah. which is why, I was like, why is this so slow? When I was editing, like like my timeline would grow and grow, and it would get slower. And I was like, "Why?" And he told me, like, so "Oh, you buy the studio." That's Josh Rover guy you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Josh Vergara told me that. So I I ended up buying the studio version. How much is it? Three hundred dollars. Ah, so it's like Final Cut. But it yeah yeah, but it's a one time. Yeah, and it's dual I, I hate the I hate the subscription thing. I it hate. Just drives me. I nuts. have Adobe Cloud because I use other Adobe products, but I I don't even use Premiere. And I have it. I have it. But you used to, right? I used to. It was it was just buggy and it was not. I'm a Final Cut person. Actually, that's only when I'm really dedicated to making a good video, which is rare because I'm a bit of a slacker when it comes to video, which is why you get the unedited version of the podcast if you join Patreon, boys and girls. And it's unedited. But I mean, I cut the beginning and end and I did do I have a little sequence intro, <laughs> but it's like I actually use iMovie for that one. I'm that lazy. <laughs> Da -da -da -da. Okay, transparency. Well, hey, look, you know, iMovie works great for just basic, you know, sure. you assemble something together in like a two seconds and you're good to go. Yeah. If you're starting to do like color grading and stuff and you need some, that's when I go to final. Like if I need to do something a little more complicated than A roll, B roll, and some sound. Oh my gosh, coloring on DaVinci Resolve so much easier than on Premiere. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I and was, you know, I tried Premiere because I had access to it for a bit and as a final cut person i couldn't wrap my head around it like i got it like i, I did edit yeah. a video successfully but i was just like uh no yeah it was i i honestly i don't if you asked me to edit something on premiere now i probably couldn't i i, I would have to look up youtube tutorials and i couldn't remember i won't remember but um what made switching to davinci easier for me is learning all the shortcuts all the keyboard shortcuts right that's just the way to do it editing if you're editing a computer just bait Shortcuts I think go, that's true of any way. professional workflow. Like when this I edit the podcast in Audacity, I know all the shortcuts mm -hmm. and I, I don't think I could use the mouse. It's just too time consuming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, should we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean is there anything else? Um... <sighs> no, I think we're good. I mean, look, the ultimately, it's it's been a slow week and yeah. we came here for the Snapdragon thing and we went on about this quite a bit. And I'm glad because I think it's important. Audio is, is a wonderful thing if... Like audio just brings you, I mean, brings me and I assume a lot of other people joy, music and other things that you can hear. And the best way to hear is when the quality is the highest. And that's what we, I think everybody's been pursuing forever. So it's exciting stuff. Tell uh, the world where to find you. Okay. Yes. Um, so um, I am at Ricky V Tech on Instagram and Twitter. And I, um, just recently launched a podcast. Which yes. I'm so excited about. And I can find this is my first time plugging the podcast officially. So the, the podcast is called How Tech Podcast. And I talk to both experts and newbies about tech and our relationships with technology and how they help us or don't help us or they annoy us or did they, you know, all of these conversations I think that are important to happen so that we can get more of a perspective on, you know, we get all this tech and we, try it and play with it and touch it and, and test it, but we don't talk to the people who use it. Right. So I think that it's important to talk to them and, and see, you know, what their thoughts are and then more and maybe not. So I don't want to get into technical things on the podcast. I want to talk more surface level stuff and more um, emotional stuff, like personal stories about tech and this kind of, because I feel like it's not being covered as much. You're right. That's awesome. And so, folks, I will put in the show notes a link to the YouTube channel. 
where Ricky's doing his new podcast. And of course, in addition to your Twitter handle. So follow you. Yes. And the handles for the podcast as well is uh, at how tech podcast. Um, and that's tech T E C H. And then uh, you can also find it at howtechpodcast.com. And hey. then all the links to all your pod, favorite podcast apps are there. Ta-da! Yay! And folks, you know where to find me. I'm at Tank Girl on Twitter and Instagram. That's T-N-K-G-R-L. Like Tank Girl, the comic book character without the vowels. If you want to discuss this podcast with me and Ricky, ping us on Twitter. And go to my Instagram for pretty pictures of phones and pretty pictures taken with phones. The uh, YouTube channel, there's a couple of them now. YouTube.com slash mobile tech podcast is where you'll find unboxings, mostly some hands-on, some reviews of the phones and other mobile devices that I like. And of course, that counts for headphones and earbuds as well, because I feel that they're pretty close enough to my heart that I don't want them on the second channel. And so youtube.com slash mobile tech podcast, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, all that good stuff. The second channel is youtube.com slash mobile tech more. And my producer and I have just kind of started it and we've posted a couple of videos occasionally. I just posted a video about uh, Lutron's home automation switches and lights and stuff on there. So I did an unboxing of their latest stuff. So, you know, that kind of thing. Peripheral to mobile, smart home, travel tech, sure. gadgets goes on there. And so check that out. YouTube.com slash mobile tech more. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, all that good stuff. Podcast lives at mobiletechpodcast.com. There's an RSS feed there if you're really old school, but we're on all the platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify. And if your app lets you rate or review the show, please consider doing that. It'd be great. I mentioned Patreon earlier. I have a Patreon now, patreon.com slash TNKGRL. That's patreon.com slash tankerl. If you want to see this podcast on video, unedited, a couple of days before the audio version that's all polished comes out. This is your chance. There's one tier that gives you that. And then I have a tier for Discord server. You can chat with me when I'm on there from time to time. There is a you know, bunch of other things there. Check it out. It helps to support me doing this podcast. If you want to donate a little bit, that'd be great. I want to thank a couple of new people. There's actually a Joshua that joined us this week. Ah, okay. It's not our Joshua, but nonetheless uh so jan thanks to joshua s for joining and macy b as well thanks so much for joining this week really appreciate you and uh folks if you want to help check out the patreon and if you don't want to use patreon and you still want to help there is a paypal link in the show notes you can click through that and make a donation that would be awesome I can't end this without saying thank you to Audible. Audible is kind of like our ongoing forever sponsor, and we kind of love them. So Audible has been with us since early days, and if you love reading as much as I do, we've got a good deal for you. AudibleTrial.com slash mobile tech is the URL. You get a 30-day free trial, and you get to keep a book at the end, whether you stay or not. But I think you'll stay because if, like me, you like to read a lot, you know, you don't have time to read a lot. I don't anymore. And uh, but at the same time, you know, I go on road trips where I'm driving or, you know, maybe you work in the delivery business and you're always in a car or truck all day and you need to keep your eyes on the road. So what a better way to get your bookworm on by listening instead of reading. Right. And that's what Audible delivers. They have, you know, long form books like 11 hour long reads and you can break it down to pieces like you would with a book by putting it down from time to time or there's shorter stuff there's podcasts i mean they have everything and i think if you join you'll love it audibletrial.com slash mobile tech if you help them you help us and vice versa so consider doing that they've been awesome they've been with us forever I want to thank Audible for being our longtime sponsor, and I want to thank you, Ricky, for being on the show yet again. Thank you, Miriam. I'm glad. I'm, this is the, this is uh, nice to be in person again. I know, right? Yeah. It's so much better. Yeah. So, folks, stay tuned. We'll obviously have another show next week, and we'll have Ricky on at some point in the future. And until then, cheers, everybody. This has been the Mobile Tech Podcast with Tank Girl, proudly presented by WorldPodcasts.com. You can visit us online at mobiletechpodcast.com